You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Uh, now, and, and just to understand again the crazy level that's happening there in Missouri, listen to this. Okay. The case of Lamar Johnson. Black man who Kim Gardner says she believes was wrongfully convicted for murder over 25 years ago. Tuesday, the Missouri Supreme Court refused to grant Johnson a new trial, stating that Kim Gardner, who is the city DA, lacked the authority to appeal a case decades after it was adjudicated. Johnson was convicted in 1994 for allegedly killing a man over a suspected drug dispute. He says he's innocent. Gardner's office has not announced whether they will appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. The, the thing about uh, this case is that the, the Hawleys of the world don't care that Gardner's office has concluded that the man is innocent. These Republicans in Missouri, Scott, are perfectly content with this black man sitting in jail to have a prosecutor come forward and say, we have investigated and we, this man is innocent. They are saying, don't matter. You don't have the authority. We don't care. Stay the hell in jail. That's the state that well, Josh Hawley comes from. And who is Josh Hawley? The former attorney general. And that's the state Supreme Court that he comes from and where Kim is and where the defendant is incarcerated. You need, you know you need two to tangle. You need a prosecutor to bring the case and prosecute, and then the judge will sentence, and then the defense obviously gives the defendant their best defense. Here, this is so highly unusual. Most jurisdictions have a catch-all statute, my colleagues know, that says any of this, any time, no matter how many years, can be brought back in the interest of justice. And when it's in the interest of justice, most courts will give you a hearing, especially federal or state prosecutor says, we made a mistake. We made a mistake. We think he's innocent and we think he needs a new trial or that he ought to be released from prison. That is extraordinary decision by a prosecutor, no matter the state, federal or local, an extraordinary decision. And for the Supreme Court, and again, I'm no expert on Missouri law, says that she doesn't have the authority to do that, well then, who the hell has the authority to do it? In most jurisdictions, nobody else has the authority. If the government says they made a mistake, or if the government opposes the release, then the justices have a decision to make. But saying that the prosecutor has no authority, well then, where does this young man go for justice then? They're, they're, they're running out of institutions that can grant him justice when a mistake, a grave mistake has been made. And so her only choice is to go to the Supreme Court. I suggest or recommend or think that she probably will, but there's got to be something or some quirk in the law that the, um, the state uh, Supreme Court is hanging their hat on. It'd be interesting to see whether they're elected at the state Supreme Court or appointed and whether they're Republicans or not, because that'll tell you a lot about their policies and their politics. But more importantly, there's got to go, there's got to be somewhere where this defendant or this incarcer this person incarcerated can go for justice when the government says you're innocent, innocent or believe that you deserve a new trial. That, that, that makes no sense to have nowhere to go for justice. Here's what's interesting, Robert. The Missouri Supreme Court said, the case is not about whether Johnson is innocent or whether there exists a remedy for someone who is innocent and did not receive a constitutionally fair trial. This case presents only the issue of whether there is any authority to appeal the dismissal of a motion for a new trial filed decades after a criminal conviction became final. No such authority exists. Therefore, this court dismisses the appeal. Now, the Republican Attorney General Eric Schmidt, he argued that Kim Gartner lacked authority to seek a new trial after the case was adjudicated. 
Now, here's the deal. Okay. Schmidt spokesman. I'm reading the Associated Press story. So the ruling makes it clear, go to my iPad, that the law does not allow the circuit attorney's office to file a motion for a new trial almost 25 uh, years too late. First of all, she wasn't in office 25 years ago. The circuit court brought our office in not to comment on innocence or guilt, but to ensure that the rule of law is upheld and the proper procedure is followed, and that's exactly what we did. Well, well, shit, Monique. Well, if you're the attorney general of the damn state, and you're saying, sorry, Kim Gardner, you don't have the authority, well, damn it, find out who does. Yeah. That's not their desire. Well, it's, and again, it's not about their desire, Roland. Um, we have the power. So I got I have to agree with what Scott said, um, because I think he, he, maybe he wasn't willing or maybe he just didn't feel like it tonight, but I will buck all of it and say plainly, they're right on the law. Uh, they're following the law. She is 25 years too late, not her, but the office is 25 years too late according to the law as it exists now in the state. That doesn't mean that there's not a remedy at in, 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 in equity. That He's got to have mean somewhere to go for justice, Monique. There, Where does he go? I'm not saying there's not somewhere to go. I'm saying where they went is not it, Scott. And we know that because we are looking plainly at what the law says. So where do you go? So, Okay, so here's the deal. Where does he go? Where do you go? You gotta change the law, right? Don't you have to change the law? And don't you, while you're trying to change the law, bring all these brilliant minds, you know, like like Scott and, and Robert and Ben and me and whoever, don't you bring them to bear and maybe look 20 years back and try to figure out, here's my first idea that I'm just gonna throw out. Look and see if there was insufficiency of counsel, because if there was insufficiency of counsel when it was supposed to be filed, maybe we can peel back time that way. Um, and so maybe it's not in this DA's office, but this DA's office, this circuit, circuit county attorney has brought it to light. And now we've got to scavenge our way. But but see, we can't expect them to do what they're not supposed to do. What we have to do when there is an unjust law is change it. Okay, but hold up, hold up. As okay, but, but here's the deal, though. First of all, wait, 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 wait. So here's the deal. Robert, this is the AP story. Gardner said there was misconduct by one of her office's former prosecutors, that secret payments were made to the witness, that police reports were falsified, and testimony perjured. Well, damn! You're absolutely so he got to right. sit in jail? Wait, he wait, wait. And Robert, go ahead. Well, well to, to Monique's point, let, let's understand that if the law says what the law says, then change the damn law. That, that seems like that's something that could get done quick, fast, and in a hurry. Uh, now, we're talking the Republican Missouri legislature. <laughs> right, well, so go, right. Roland, I, okay. I, I, under, I understand, but look, I started watching a new show a couple weeks ago called WandaVision. And so on the show, this white woman loses everything. And then she goes crazy. She goes crazy. She creates her own world in her own universe where she's in control. Uh, she has all the power. And it's the 1950s and there's not, uh, not a lot of minorities around. So we can call this MAGA vision because these people have a MAGA vision of what's going on, where they are in control of everything, where they don't have to worry about minority rights, where they don't have to worry about uh, the needs of the people as long as they are uh, financing their corporate interests. So what has to happen, and I don't care how long it takes, is if you don't have the legislators in place that are needed, then you have to put in the consecrated effort to overcome voter suppression, overcome gerrymandering, and flip the state legislatures. Eventually, Rob, you can't flip out. Republicans. The, no! Okay. Wait, hold you gotta on, let me say Scott. this. It's, Scott, listen to what I'm saying. It's not about flipping Republicans, it's about replacing Republicans. Then, if you look at the, Georgia, the demographics changed, and that's why Georgia became blue state. It's demographics in Missouri are similar. It takes the money, the ground okay. organizing, all the stuff that Roland was just doing in, for the January 5th uh, runoff in Georgia. Yeah. 
go say in St. Louis and in the um, metro areas there and start taking seats back and you flip the state and that's when you push things through. Elections have consequences. Okay. So this is okay. This is what the law sets and they are really okay, so in line with the law being changed. I got another law path for my, for my colleague. Let me give you another pathway and tell me if you agree with it, guys. All righty. So they get rebuffed by the state Supreme Court. There is no time limitation on obtaining a writ of habeas corpus. That is, they filed the federal with the federal court to produce the body, if you will. A federal judge in Missouri who has a lifetime appointment orders the body be produced, the, the incarcerated be produced. He or she holds a hearing, and the government agrees with the defense that he was wrongfully incarcerated, and you get a federal judge to issue an order for a new trial or, in the alternative, for his release. That's how you do it. Okay, and that Scott. Been exhausted already. Scott. And there's no okay. time limitation on that. S Scott, okay, so you cooking with grease now, right? You cooking with yeah. grease. You can you can fry some fish. We can have some crawfish. We we can do a lot of things with that hot grease that you're cooking with now. So the amount of time that was spent, what's the butt? You know, kicking kicking against the crick prick with 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 the law that we know is not on the side of the poor circuit county attorney. She did the best she could, she could. But I mean, and I'm not calling out the defense attorneys, whoever this man's defense attorneys are. God bless you, whoever you are. I know you're probably there working. Free, but my no, 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 no. Hold up. First of all, hold up, hold up. Just facts, just facts. His defense attorney is long gone. The Missouri Innocence, the Missouri Innocence Project, has been working with Kim Gardner's office on this. The moment she got elected, that's how it even got this far. Uh, that okay, mm -hmm. but but Roland, the theory. I'm just giving facts. The, the, okay, and the theory of the case is wrong, and every branch of the Innocence Project isn't the same, and and the dude. Who who was who just finished talking? They would want to listen to him because he might know some ways around it. That's okay. All. Fine. So while the two of y'all the in uh, write this up in the I'm I'm talking. One the two of y'all write that up, and then I'll send to Kim Gardner. I'm good with it. And Kim Gardner and will Robert probably join. tell you That's all why I'm you can or cannot do that. Well, here, why don't we just ask her? So let's see okay, here. Okay, call her up. Got a number? Who you think you talking to? He gonna call up. Who the hell you think? Who the hell you think you he talking to? <laughs> who the hell you think you talking to, Scott? <laughs> you know he gonna call her. He gonna call her. <laughs> Let's get somewhere. I'm excited about it. Hey Kim. This. How you doing? Hey, I'm on the air right now, uh, and we talk about this. We talk about this. I'm literally on the air. We talk about this Lamar Johnson case. And so Scott Bolden has a legal idea to try to move this thing forward. Uh, you want to hear what he has to say? Okay. All right, all right. I'm going to have a control room call you. We're going to pull you up. Okay. Uh, all right, control room, get ready to call because uh, we're talking about this case. We're trying to figure out, okay, how, how can we, uh, you know, what action can take, what's next to get this brother free. So they're going to call you back in 10 seconds, okay? Okay. Okay, all right, bye-bye. Hold on. I told you he was going to do it. <laughs> Hold on. He's a let's mess. go, let's He's go, just let's a mess. go. See, this this is why uh, Chelsea, that's the phone number. Uh, y'all call Kim on FaceTime audio or FaceTime video. Uh, y'all give a call right now. See, let me, this is also why y'all, while y'all doing that. That's why we ain't on network While y'all doing network that. This, TV, this, this, you can't just do this. This is why you guys support you a black show. I, I, this is why you guys support a black we show. Three, we got three lawyers and a See, journal. see this right here, why y'all, now keep me, keep me on, uh, on the screen. This is why y'all support a black show, uh, because you ain't gonna get this on MSNBC, CNN. Solution. The host ain't gonna call somebody on the air. Uh, this 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 show we doing is the actual show that I, I pitched to CNN call. back in 2007, which I called a scripted unscripted show, where you just take it wherever you want to take it, and that's what we doing right here. That's why y'all gotta We're support us with our Bring the Funk fan part. club. So y'all should support us at Cash App Dollar Sign. Pull the graphic up. Uh, dollar Sign Cash App Dollar Sign R M Unfiltered. <laughs> PayPal.me forward slash R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo.com forward slash R M Unfiltered. Uh, my Zell is at Rolling at RollingSmartin.com or Rolling at RollingMartinUnfiltered.com. So, so so this is how we do it. Pull Kim on audio. I don't need Kim on video. Pull her on audio. All right, Kim. Okay, so Scott Kim Gartner is on the phone. So Scott. 
Kim, we've already told everybody the Lamar Johnson case, the Missouri Supreme Court denying it, uh, the Attorney General saying you didn't have standing, it was too late. Uh, we, so yeah. we were talking about with these three lawyers, what's next? Scott says this should happen next. Scott, go. Hey, Kim, Scott Bolden. The alternative, I thought, and there, as to whether, is there any reason why the defendant and the Innocence Project haven't brought a writ of habeas corpus to the federal court for them to produce the body before a federal judge, have a hearing, and hopefully get the federal judge to order either his release or that he get a new trial uh, with your office in support of uh, the defense uh, request for that writ? Kim? Yeah, I believe that's a, a, a avenue, and that's where I think that um, we have to find a way, because in this case, as you know, this is not about, everybody thinks this is about just the rights of, and what it is about a wrongfully convicted man, but it's about the rights of a mm -hmm. prosecutor to correct and do their job, the constitutional duty to correct a wrongful conviction and to be true ministers of justice. We, we take an oath. Not just yeah. to the, the laws of the state of Missouri, but actually the Constitution. And, and so if so, you're basically saying that a prosecutor who finds wrongdoing has no mechanism and, and, and the procedure bar is just so great that we, basically we can't do our job. And this, this is serious. This is whether a prosecutor can actually be the minister yeah. of justice that they claim that we should be. How can exactly. this be? Yeah. So, can you so, so, so Cam, hold on. So, Cam. The you chose. Is, hold on, Scott. Got, hold on, Scott. Hold on, Scott. Hold on, Scott. Hold on. Hold on. So, okay. Kim, you chose to go this process to to, to first to stat, to see if you could actually pursue this. You took it to the state supreme court. Now that they've said no, you don't have the authority. Now it's now now figure out another route. Yes, we will figure out another route, and that's my goal. Is because I think that we have to, as prosecutors, it's fundamental to our job our duty into the whole integrity of the criminal justice system to find a mechanism to correct the wrong. And we should not be impeded by uh, just the procedural bar barriers that we are, that the Supreme Court of Missouri looked at. And that's to me is devastating because justice should not end when we secure a conviction. Justice should also be obtained and followed through by a prosecutor even after a conviction is attained. And we, that's our duty. So when we talk about the constitutional oath, where is that at in the Lamar, jo Lamar Johnson case? And so it's, and like I said, people think it's just about Lamar. It's about a prosecutor's right, a duty that we all know we control a lot in the criminal justice system. And we have to, we're, we're the minister of justice. And so you're basically saying a prosecutor has no duty to correct wrongful convictions. And I, and I disagree with the Supreme Court. Scott, go ahead. Then Monique and Robert. Fact, Scott, go ahead. Which would affect, leave him in legal purgatory in an unjust system whereby you as the prosecutor knows that he was wrongfully convicted. And so uh, I agree the short-term effect would be for you to ask for a hearing and it went to the state Supreme Court and to see if you could just get justice that way. In the alternative though, seeking a federal court order on the writ of habeas corpus with you supporting the defense motion and supporting the defense in that federal hearing vis-a-vis -vis produce the body would seem to be the second most efficient way to do it. And if you could get the federal court to do justice, I don't know what the attorney general, the state attorney general would do or any other political forces there, but you, that, that defendant certainly has a right to do it. And with your support, you could possibly get them to produce the body, order a new trial or release it. And Scott, just wanted to, to just to articulate this point. You know, when you talk about the attorney general, this is the attorney general that sued uh, China. This is the attorney general that actually was a part of uh, trying to prevent the election certification of uh, Biden and Kamala, vice president, you know, um, elect, you know, now the vice president of the United States, the first African-American female. So this is an attorney general that does not understand the rule of law, does not hold the Constitution and supports uh I believe insurrection behavior, which we we know in Missouri, we have just Senator Holly and others that uh, are do not support the Constitution or the rule of law. So what we're talking about is equal justice under the laws for everyone. And in this right. case, we should be able to correct wrongful convictions. And that's our job, our duty. And we talk about upholding the law and protecting everyone inside the, the, the courtroom. And, a do, and the prosecutor is different. We're not an advocate for an individual. We're for the whole integrity of the system. And so that's right. I, 
a fight because it's not just about Lamar. It's about everyone that we may have in Missouri that is wrongfully convicted. And we have overwhelming evidence of, of innocence. And so a prosecutor is supposed to say, oh, my bad, something happened and it's wrong. And we just sit there and wait until uh, somebody gives us the, the, the right. And, I, and there's no procedure. So the, in Missouri, there's no um, actual limitations. It's unclear about whether a, uh, the prosecutor can bring a motion for a new trial. They're saying I'm subject to the same limitations as the defendant. Come on. Monique. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that makes no Monique. That makes no sense. Just thank you so much, Kim, just for the courage and boldness uh, to be willing to step forward and take this kind of heat when you see that something has been done that is unjust. What we were talking about before you got on, my point of view on it is if a prosecutor doesn't have the latitude that they need because the law is constricting and, and, and constraining, then the law needs to be changed. And so there has to be work on all sides. Um, and I don't think that uh, we have to wait and only do one thing. We can do both things at the same time, or can we not? Well, we have to understand where we are. And we are in a time in Missouri, unfortunately, that is d controlled by um, the uh, conservative Republicans that want to have this rule of law, law and order. But when it comes to unfairness and injustice, they seem to be silenced on cases like Lamar Johnson. We have a governor right now can look at commuting sentences, but, you know, he's failed to do that. And he started with um, some low level. I'm not I'm not knocking the individuals that are are, are seeking commute, commutation or the mechanism. But the cases that the governor is reviewing, I have some concern but I have concerns on this governor. This is the same governor that basically called for my um, uh, investigation with Senator Holly in terms of a case that we all know that is uh, I'm dealing with right now. Uh, the couple, the gun toting couple that um, decided to weigh their guns at um, individuals that decided to exercise their right to protest. And it's who do you believe the, the rule of law should be applied to and in what way? And so this governor is on board with picking sides when he has no idea about how a prosecutor has to, to evaluate and investigate individual criminal activity in their jurisdiction. And we have that discretion, but because I'm the first African-American circuit attorney, which that's what they call me in my jurisdiction, I'm challenged like no other. And I'm always questioned doing my job by every level of government, even the former president. So it's, it needs to stop playing that if you want to do justice, in this, in Lamar Johnson's case, do we have the will to do the right thing? And in Missouri, right now, we said no. We want to have these procedural barriers that impede justice. And I say, I don't believe that. I don't believe our Constitution supports that. I don't believe justice supports that. And I can't sit by and say and let that stand. Robert Patillo. Well, we want. We definitely want to be able to support you in that. Thank you for that. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, this is like one of those group projects at school where I'm just going to say, just let me know what you need me to do. Uh, I'll, I'll talk Reverend into it or something. Uh, we got to get this done. But uh, ain't black women amazing and wonderful? Uh, between uh, uh, Ms. Gardner, Letitia James, Fonnie Willis, they really are leading the way on criminal justice reform in this country, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And I find it ironic, the same people who are supporting the McCloskey's waving guns at people are the same people who are supporting the arrest of Grandmaster J of the N uh, the NFAC for pointing a gun at people. So I think it's important to have the park prosecutors like yourself re uh, leading the charge on restorative justice and just let me know what you need me to do. I'm ready to help out. I appreciate that. Thank you. Kim Gardner, we appreciate you uh, taking the call. Uh, and uh, folks, everybody, my one-on-one -on -one with Kim with this Friday, we're going to run my one-on-one -on -one with uh, County Attorney Wesley Bell there in St. Louis. Next Friday will be my one-hour conversation with Kim Gardner. Kim, thanks a lot. Thank you, Roland. Appreciate the opportunity. All thank right. You. Thank you very much. Folks, got to go to a break. We come back more on Roland Martin Unfiltered. See, y'all, ain't, ain't no other show like this. Ain't no other show this real, this black. Uh, nobody. I'm Y'all go pick anybody black on any of the other networks. Line them all up. I'll give you some money after this show. L line, line them all up. Put them together. You know, you act like you got some sense sometimes. First of all, don't ever try to challenge me, Scott. You're the only lawyer that ain't on here. And you're talking most, the more shit than all three of us. Scott was <laughs> right. Why are you saying don't ever try to challenge you? Scott was right. No, no. Scott tried to challenge me. Uh, what you gonna do, call him? <laughs> well, good, because then we found out I knew you were going to call her I ain't the one to challenge 
See, when we growing up, growing up, when we had truth or dare. When we had truth or dare, I ain't never do truth. Good call, brother. Good call. Dare me. H-U, Scott. H-U. You know. No, T-A-M-U, Texas A&M. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.